Hey guys, thanks for coming back. So today uh, I got as part of a bulk purchase of tenders, one of my favorite, the tin type whistle tenders. Uh, I just love these things. They're very simple. This one is a 2689W. It is a pre-war and it also has its original wires, which is the reason it's on the video today. The wires are shot, the insulation is dried out and cracking and well cracked so there's a lot of exposed wires which is going to cause shorts it's broken off the terminal so we're going to address that we're also going to take the shell off and have a look inside and make sure everything's all right in there and then we're going to throw this on the track but unfortunately i don't have any cars that'll hook up to this coupler so it'll be just the tender and the locomotive but still going to be cool so Let's get started. So we've got the uh, tender on the bench here. <clears throat> and once again, this is an excellent conditioned um, 2689W uh, pre-war whistle tender. Uh, found this online, bought it with a bunch of other tenders. And this thing is just in fantastic shape. However, the wires, the original wires are done. They're all dried and they've separated from the pickup roller. So really what I'm hoping is that's all it needs is some new wires dropped on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the top of this shell, have a look underneath, see what's going on inside this thing. And hopefully it is just replacing the wires. So what I'm going to do, though, to take the top of the uh, tender off is I've got my soldering iron heating up right now, and I'm going to apply heat to each of these tabs on the tender before I bend them. So applying heat softens these up a little bit, makes them easier to bend, and also kind of helps prevent them from breaking. Because once these tabs are broken, that's it. There's nothing to hold the top of the uh, the top shell down. Okay, so I think the soldering iron is heated up well enough that we can start doing this. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to hold the soldering iron onto the tab, let the heat get on there for a little bit, and then just bend it back with the screwdriver. This will also kind of reduce the chance of putting too many scratches in the uh, paint on the frame of this tender. It might not work out perfectly, but at least I won't be fussing around too much with it. So, here we go. Let's bend that back a little bit, and there we go. So let's get to this middle one here, and this one's always the toughest because everything is around it. But unlike the post-war tenders, at least if the soldering iron touches the side of the um, coal tender, it's not going to melt the shell. But I really do want to keep the bottom of this in as good shape as I can, just because it is already so nice. So again, we'll just let that sit on there for a little bit. Let it get nice and heated up. And then we will bend the tab back. That should be enough there. Put that down. There we go. Might as well do the other center one while we've got it exposed here. And there we go. So all the tabs are lifted up straight. And we should be able to pull this shell free. This one had a little bit of rust on it. That might be holding it. Holding it in place. There we go. All right. So EA10871. Wondering if that's the last repair that was done on this in 1971. That's pretty cool. 
That's the first time I've seen a little message attached into these. So having a look at the overall condition of this, it looks pretty fantastic, actually. So here's our wires that we have to replace. This is kind of a weird setup, though. I've got this grounding screw at the bottom, or it looks like a ground screw. That's the first I've ever seen of that. The relay looks good. The wires are all good there. This definitely looks like it's been replaced on. Because usually when I see these, this type of tender, this is a cast box, not a plastic one, but it has a metal faceplate on it. So this is early post-war, pre-war. The setup under here looks like pre-war, but this plastic definitely is not. I can see there's a hole there. It's like someone kind of rigged up a post-war and pre-war together to make this work. So now I'm really curious to hook these wires back up and see if uh, what they did actually did work. Let's get ourselves some new wires, attach those back to the uh, pickup rollers down at the bottom. We'll take this plate off, have a look at the um, armature and commutator underneath just quickly to make sure that it's all clean and all together. And then we'll throw this on the track and see if we get any noise out of it. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart now. Three, four. Smells like really old French fry oil. So as you can see too, this here is a good reason to replace the original wiring. The insulation just dries up and it ends up cracking and exposing the bare wire. As you can see, you can just easily snap this just by trying to bend it. So the rubber insulation is no longer pliable. It cracks, exposes all the wires, and that starts causing shorts. So we want to get rid of that. And I use the telephone wire, which is the perfect gauge for this stuff. So all I do is cut off a length of it using one of the original lengths just as a guide to measure. And then give myself just a little bit extra. So lining these up together here, this would be a good length right about here. We're going to go to about there. The reason I'm not zipping the knife down the whole length of the insulation is I don't want to ruin any of the wires there. Like so. So there we go. Here's our two pieces of wire. Get my stripper. Clean off those ends. I don't want to clean off too much. Perfect. I'm going to try to clean off some of this excess solder that's on these wheels here. All right, looks like that's as clean as I can get it with the tools I have. Let's get rid of that excess and start putting these new wires on. So I'm going to start off up at the top up here and I think uh, since they both go into the same terminal I'm just going to wrap these two together make it easier on myself Okay, 
That will feed this through the hole. And clearly it doesn't matter which wire goes to what side because they both go to the same terminal anyway. So what I'm going to do, and I'm just going to bend this up so I can come up from the bottom. Just like that. And I always personally like to bend these back down around and then finish it with a look, quick little bead of solder. Just like that. Nice and neat. I'll get the other side now. Perfect. Now I can pull the excess back through just so it's not dragging along the tracks. There we go. So that's the wiring hook backed up. So just from the naked eye, it's look like that looks like that is all that was really needed for this particular thing. But I am going to take that brush plate off. Have a look at the armature and commutator plates underneath. Make sure those are all in good shape before I get too excited. There's the field wire down there, so I want to be real careful there. In fact, I don't want that to break. So I am going to remove it first. There we go. Here's one of our brushes. So this is quite dirty. There is quite a bit of carbon buildup on it. So I am going to give this a quick clean and it's spinning freely though, so that's nice. So I'm just going to go back to the good old green scotch pad, cut a little strip off here, and give this a wipe down. Here we go, we got a nice bright copper commutator plates to work with here. I want to clean out the brush holders themselves, so I'm just going to cut a thin strip out of this pad and just kind of send it in there and spin it around. That's going to be more than enough to clean out any carbon that's in there. And you can use some contact cleaner in here if you want. I've done it in the past. That's fine. But usually when you've got the scouring pad like that, it's more than enough just on its own. Now, what I also notice in here is there is some dirt in between the plates, if you can see it there. So I'm going to get my little toothpick tool, which is this here, which works perfectly to dig out these little slots. So we're looking good there. Now, these old, older style um, post-war and pre-war whistle tenders have a bearing in here. Um, this is a pretty unusual setup, like I said. This is early post-war, pre-war backing plate on a post-war plastic whistle box. Um, clearly kind of been melted to make it fit on here because this thing is usually sealed with a plastic lid not with a metal one so Mr. EA from the lid in here has kind of put this thing together that way for whatever reason 
because of that we're going to drop some oil onto this bearing that's in here because that is going to be really crucial for this thing to spin freely. So we'll just get that done there. Have a look at the brushes and they're a bit fouled up as well. So we're just going to clean them off. And they're pretty worn down but there's still more than enough there for a whistle tender. I'm not worried about that. That will be just fine. Set those back in. Maybe clean off this little bottom of the tab here for the field. While we've got it apart, I'm looking at this contact for the relay in here, because if that gets dirty, that can kind of mess things up as well. So you can get yourself a little piece of sandpaper, cut a strip of it off, and just feed that in there. And it's the bottom that we're really concerned about here. So you don't need to apply too much pressure to it. If you need a bit of support, you can put a flat head underneath push them together a little bit and just kind of drag it through and that should be more than enough for that. So now get our field wire out of the way and we can put this out. Might as well put a little bit of oil just on this end of the shaft as well. Just like so. Can wipe off any excess because we don't want it on the commutator plate like that. Wipe that oil off. Good enough. Now let's put her back together. Okay. Field wire is on. Pickup rollers are connected again. Whatever this wire is going to the screw is still attached. We've cleaned off the contact on the relay, so let's throw this on the track and see what we get. All right, see you over there. All right, so we have our whistle tender on the track. We've got the transformer all hooked up here. Let's apply some power and see if it does anything. And it does immediately. That is loud. I love it. So just putting those wires back on and a little bit of cleaning is all this whistle tender really needed. So now we can put the shell back on and hook a locomotive up to this and send her around the track. I think though it's only fitting to join Mr. or Mrs. EA 10871, so I'm thinking that's October 8th, 1971, the year before I was born, to put my initials in. Put WM, and it is May 20th, 2023. So there we go. The two repairs done on this tender. Let's get this shell back on and put this back on the track. So that was it. Put the wires back on to the uh, pickup rollers. Clean off the commutator plates in the armature. And this whistle tender is back on the track and whistling. We've got my 646 doing the honors of pulling it around for the first time. Looks a little bit odd with this little tender, but... What the heck? Let's do it. And like I said, I wish I had some rolling stock that had a compatible rear coupler to this, but I don't. So it's just going to be the locomotive and the tender making the rounds. So guys, thank you very much for watching this. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. 
before I hit the like button, go over to uh, redbubble.com or zazzle.com. Check out some of the merchandise that I have available. Uh, any help and support there would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.